Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for joining me this day. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are all over the world. My name is Anne Arobe and we are looking at what does the Bible say about menopause? What does the Bible say about menopause? Can we actually find that word in the Bible? What does the Bible say about it? Praise God. We want to try to see what the Bible says about it. Amen. You know, there's so much, even in the news now, so much on the online, on social media about menopause. There's so much, even in the news, a lot of documentaries have been run about what women go through during menopause. Praise the Lord. So, does God know about what we go through? Because the, the picture we are presented with sounds very bleak. The symptoms, the um, headaches, um, um, going to the toilet all the time, the lack of sexual libido, the um, fatigue, got so many things, most of them negative. I don't even think I've heard of anything positive that takes place during um, menopause. But you know what? God is God. What does the Bible say about menopause? Exactly what the Bible says about everything. Let God be true and let every man be a liar. God is always God. God is true. God is faithful. Amen. If you go to the book of Genesis, when God created man, he created when I say man, male and female, amen, the Bible says he created male and female. We are made in his likeness, both male and female. So God did not create us for negativity. Amen. What does the Bible say about menopause? Exactly what it says about everything we face in life. Exactly what it says about what we go through when we want to have the fruit of the womb, when we want a husband, when we want a wife, when we want to start a business. It's a challenge. Life is challenging. It's a challenge. And, you know, it's very good to refer to whatever we go through in life as a challenge and not a problem. Amen. Because if it's a challenge, you will overcome. Hallelujah. Jesus said in this world, there will be what? There will be tribulation. But be of good cheer. Be happy. Be of good cheer. I have overcome. Amen. He has overcome. Glory to God. He has overcome. All the, the symptoms, the tiredness, the weakness, everything you will go through through menopause, he has overcome. That is the message of the Bible. The Bible is not a negative um, and it's, it's not negative. God doesn't say anything negative about you as a special child of God. And if you are listening to me today and you have never given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, you've never considered it's important for you to be a Christian or to allow Jesus Christ in your life, I challenge you today to just hand over your situation to him. Amen. Because doctors don't have the answers. Doctors are trying their best, you know, to comfort women at this very important time in their lives but you know oh we have to use hrt we have to use um patches we have to use so many things those things are good doctors are fantastic at their job but people still have complaints amen people still have complaints people still uh women still go through all all these terrible um sim symptoms that we know that um, menopausal women go through but you know what? When God made you, as I said earlier, his thoughts towards you are good and not evil. The Bible says you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are wonderful. You are beautiful. You are precious. Okay, so going to answer that question, what does the Bible say about menopause? That actual phrase is not in the Bible as the word menopause. However, we have women who, um, in the account of their lives, it was said about them that they, uh, it has seed with them according to the manner of women or custom of women. So when Rachel uh, did not want to speak to her father, uh, she sat um, on the idol. She, she, she hid from him and said, oh, I cannot get up now because it is with me according to the custom of women. So the custom of women, there was menstruation. So when Sarah, so taking to Sarah, when Sarah, of course, uh, had been the wife of Abraham for many years and she was stricken in age you know the, her description was that it was no longer with her according to the manner of women so it means she was menopausal so we're going to look at 
uh, um, about three or four women uh, in the Bible who, from the time we see them come on the stage, come on the scene of the Bible, they were already in their menopausal age. Praise the Lord. So, starting with uh, Sarah, Sarah, Mama Sarah, the Bible says we need to look up to her. Sarah, uh, we know that when God called Abraham, Abraham was 75 years old. And um, in Genesis 17, 17, verse 17, the Bible says, Abraham fell down, he laughed and said to himself, Will a son be born to a man a hundred years old? Will Sarah bear a child at the age of 90? So we can see from that statement that there, there were 10 years between Abraham and Sarah. And it means that when Sarah appears on the scene in the Bible, in the book of Genesis, she was 65. Okay, and we know, okay, so the definition of the natural physical definition of menopause is when women stop their menstrual, seeing their menstrual period. And it takes place between the age of between about 40, 42, and 55. That is the uh, general definition of menopause. So obviously, uh, Sarah had gone way beyond that. Sarah was 65 years old. Sarah was 65 years old. But what do we see about Abraham and Sarah? They, they worked in unity. They were a united couple. When Abraham, God appeared to Abraham, we were not told that Sarah was there. You know, God appeared to Abraham. But when Abraham got home and said, I have met with the God of heaven and earth, he has said, I'm going to show you a place. Come with me. Even though, <coughs> obviously, it looks funny. Nobody had, there was no widow. She, she didn't have the recorded printed Bible the way we have it today. There was really nothing to follow other than follow the leading of her husband. And I believe Abraham also was a wonderful husband, trustworthy. It was, she, he was so trustworthy that Sarah could trust that, oh, if I follow this man, I know he's not going to lead me into the pit. So there, was no, there were no arguments. There were no um, uh, setbacks or drawbacks or, or sluggish. There's nothing sluggish about it. When, God, when Abraham received the word, shared it with his wife, they packed everything they had and they left the place of their comfort. Sarah was, I believe, a woman of faith. Because it would take faith for you to leave everything you know, everything you love, everything you're comfortable with, and just go into a place you don't know. So there was uncertainty. That leads to menopause, isn't it? It's uncertain because if you've done any research, listened to anything about uh, um, uh, menopause, every woman women have different experiences some medication some treatment works for some women it doesn't work for some women so it's uncertain but you know what the god we are serving he knows tomorrow he knows he is certain our god is a certain god so if you hold his hand put your hand put your hand in the hand of the master you will never miss your way and that was that's the step of faith that sarah took and she followed her husband, she followed God, and followed her husband, and obeyed, and followed him. Amen. Genesis chapter 12, verse 11 tells us, It came to pass, when he was come near into Egypt, that he said unto Sarai, his wife, Behold, now I know thou art a fair woman to look upon. What does that mean? Yet thou art a beautiful woman to look upon. And that was when he told her, please. You are so beautiful that when you step into this city, the king is going to notice you. Just say, you are my sister. She said, should Abraham have done that? Okay, well, that's not, that's not the topic for today. But the fact remains that that, that, that was how, to me, or what, for me, what comes out of this story really is that this, this woman at the age of what? Way into her menopause could cause such a stir in the city. There were other young ladies there in the city. There were other people around, other young ladies around, other women her age are around. The king was not bothered about them. He was bothered about her. He was bothered. He was interested in Sarah because Sarah stood out. Sarah was a woman of God. Being a woman of God is not just about having a big title. 
every woman who puts herself in the hand of God is a woman of God. Sarah was a woman of God because she followed God. First Peter chapter 3, verse 4. You know, Sarah's life is so potent, so um, so impactful that even in the New Testament, her life was referred to. Amen. Even the book of Isaiah, the Bible says that we are daughters of Abraham. That we should say, look unto Abraham, look unto Sarah, your mother. Look unto her. She was such a, a perfect example for us to look up to. So first Peter chapter 3, verse 4 says. But let it, that is you are done in, be the hidden man of the heart, in that which is not corruptible. Your heart is not corruptible. Even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. So what was Sarah's adorning? Her adorning was the hidden man of the heart. Not about showing up, not about everybody seeing her, but the hidden man of the heart. The ornament of a meek and quiet spirits amen you know the bible says be still and know that i am god when you are still in your spirit a meek and quiet spirit a, 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 a quiet spirit it's a humble spirit a spirit i mean meekness is power under control sarah had power because abraham <laughs> was a big man when lot was in trouble the, the servants in Sarah's um, uh, Sarah's household, the servants in Abraham, Abraham and Sarah's household were the ones he put together. He didn't take anybody from any anywhere else. He put his own men together and fought a nation. He fought a whole nation. That was how big Sarah was. So a woman married to a great man is a great woman. Beside every great man, there's a great woman. So Sarah was a great woman. She had power, but she was meek. She was not like Vashti, who was also married to a great man. But when it was time for, when the king called for her, Vashti had her own agenda and said, excuse me, I'm busy. You can't call me at this time. Sarah was not like that. Sarah had a meek and quiet spirit. And the Bible says, which in the sight of God is of great price. So Sarah's adorning. So why did Sarah have so much impact? Because she, her adorning was the hidden man of the heart. It was hidden. The NIV puts it beautifully. It says, rather, it should be that of your inner self. So your adorning should be that of your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of which is of great worth in God's sight. Don't forget, don't forget where we started from. Sarah was a woman in her menopause. Amen. But she had beauty from her inner self. You know, your the, your inner man needs to be renewed every day. Amen. You know, Paul said, even though my outward man might die, but my inner man is renewed every day. How's your inner man renewed? Bible says, be not trans, um, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. By the renewing of your mind, you know, take time to get the word of God into you. The way the word of God works with you earlier in your life is the same way the word of God works with you now that you are in menopause or in perimenopause. Perimenopause starts from uh, for some women even at, at in their late thirties, for all from about forties, and then the real menopause sets in maybe closer towards the fifties. But even then, because we are all different. It comes at any time. Whatever time it does come, you are who you are. You are what God says you are. Amen? You are what God says you are. God has put upon you the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit which you need to develop and is described as a uh, 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 meek and quiet spirit is, is unfading. It's beautiful. It's unfading and beautiful. Amen? So what you need to work on? You need to work on the fruit of the spirit. Spirit of gentleness, meekness, patience, kindness, long suffering. The Bible says, against such there is no law. The fruit of the spirit can still be in your life. Oh, but I have mood swings. Oh, but I have hot flushes. Oh, but I have all those things. Lay them at the feet of Jesus. That was why Mary was so wise. A woman like us as well. We don't know how old she was, but we know that as a woman, she didn't decide to be like her sister, so stressed out. She sat at the feet of Jesus. It's the same principle. It's the same principle. Praise the Lord. Verse 5 of 1 Peter 3 says, For after this manner, in the old time, the holy women also, who trusted in God, adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands. The key word there is own. 
They did not compare their husbands to other people. They were satisfied with their own husband. They were in subjection unto their own husband. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters you are, as long as you do well and you are not afraid with any amazement. So you can see there, <coughs> you are a daughter of Abraham. Uh, a daughter of Abraham, a daughter of Sarah. We are, we, we are the daughters of Sarah. Sarah had a beautiful menopausal uh, uh, lifestyle. Even everything that we know about her started. We didn't know what happened to her in her 30s or 20s. We knew about her from the age of 65, which was clearly menopausal, but we didn't see her. Um, we, we didn't see her uh, losing her mind. Things will happen. Memory loss. All those symptoms. Praise the Lord. Maybe we can blame it, that on her making, asking um, her husband sleep with my uh, slave, sleep with other. So I can't have give to you children. You know, I can't give you children. I can't give you children. You know, sleep with sleep with my mate, sleep with my mate. I would say I could argue. Or we can argue on her behalf. Maybe she was in one of her mood swings when that happened. And you know, children, daughters of God, daughters of Zion, when when all these symptoms show forth in your life, that is not the time to take very, very important decisions. When you are, you know, you can't, what, what you need to do is you be able to know who you are. So this message is not just for people already in their 60s, 50s, even if you're in your 20s, if you're in your 30s, you need to know who you are so that when you are, when, when, when thoughts are coming to your mind that are not the way you behave, you say, oh, no, no, I'm not going to take any important decision at this time. I'm going to actually seek God's face. You can seek God's face about everything and anything. You can seek God's face when you don't know how to make the soup. You can seek God's face when you don't, when you don't have enough money in your account and your husband is saying, I want this best meal and there's nothing to, to present food on the table. And you can seek God's face over any, any matter. Praise the Lord. So maybe we can say, yes, she was going through one of her menopausal manifestations. That was when she pushed her husband to do what she was not supposed to do. And of course, looking back in hindsight, a lot of the problems that we have today in the in the a lot of problems that we have today are, 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 are taking place because of the children that we call the children of the bond woman. Right? We have um, Maitasini, Boko Haram, Al Qaeda. We have all kinds of um, uh, um, attacks that come from that come from uh, um, the, the situation of the, the, the son that Hagar bore for Abraham. Praise the Lord. But again, that shows us. So we should learn from that. Really, we should learn from that. We should learn that. When you're going through your mood swings or things like that, that's not a time to take very important decisions because, okay, that decision that Sarah took is still affecting planet Earth today. So if you take very important situations, you could do things that will affect even the next generation. So it's a good time for you to calm down, still seek God's face. There is nothing wrong in you seeking God's face at ever, seeking for anything, and only God could be God. If you came to seek my face, maybe I won't. There's only so much I can bear as a woman being. There's only so much your husband can bear as a woman being. There's only so much the girls around you can bear because they are just human beings. But you know what you can call upon the Lord. The NIV version of First Peter chapter three, from verse five says, "For this is the way the holy women of the past put their hope in God. They put their hope in God. They put their hope in God." That's what you do. The word of God is still alive. Whether we're in menopause, whether we're in midlife crisis, men also have what they go through. Men go through a lot of stress. You know, just that they speak more about what they are going through than, than women. And I thank God for this opportunity for us to have a girl talk so we can talk to each other as girls and talk about what we go through. Amen. But the Bible tells us, see, Bible says all scripture is given for our inspiration. All scripture. I mean, that line there just says it all. The holy women of, of the past, Sarah of the past, put her hope in God. And that was how she adorned herself. Bible says, okay, uh, carry on, it says they submitted themselves to their own husbands, like Sarah, who obeyed Abraham and called him her Lord. 
You are her daughters if you do what is right and do not give way to fear. Can you say that? I will not give way to fear. I will not give way to fear. A sister, I had that testimony today, went to a doctor and they gave her so many um, 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 you know, analyze so many things that could happen to her. Oh, you know, you're menopause. This can happen to you. You won't be able to sleep. You've got hot flushes. You've got this thing. They created such a negative picture. And she said, that is not my portion. In Jesus' name, that is not my portion. I, that is not for me. I will not give way to fear. Children of God, the word of God is yes and amen. This is, this is the time to show for the Bible that we really claim to believe in. I feel so sad when I go sometimes to meetings and... Maybe there's a time to for discussion and people begin to talk down on the word of God and say, oh, you can't just say you believe in Jesus. You need to do use other things as well. The word of God is yes and amen. Even if you're going to take medication, that doesn't mean you believe in the word of God. Amen. If you're going to take HRT, if you're going to take um, estrogen, whatever it is you're going to take, even testosterone, whatever it is, if you need to take it, you still do that, whatever you do, because I'm not speaking as a medical doctor, I'm just speaking by faith, but the word of God says, you are her daughters if you do not give way to fear, and God did not give you the spirit of fear, amen, God did not, has not given you the spirit of fear, he has given you the spirit of love, of power, and of a sound mind and of a sound mind. So what happens when you notice yourself, you are, you, you are having these negative feelings, negative mood swings, negative thoughts, just let your family understand, I just need a few minutes to myself. I need some time to myself at this point in time. I just need, and then you just seek God, you know, just withdraw yourself for some time and then get re revitalized, re-energized and carry on. The world goes on. You know, I'm, um, the age of menopause is also an age at which women work very hard. The Bible says in Proverbs 14, verse 1, the wise woman builds her home. Women are builders. Look at the, the Proverbs 31 woman. She wakes up early in the morning. She goes far to get food from her, her family. She is an entrepreneur. Hallelujah. So women work very, very hard in their early years. At the year or uh, earlier stage of their life, 20s, 30s, maybe early 40s. So the time you are meant to be reaping is actually when you are in your menopause years. Don't let the devil lie to you. Maybe you have worked hard in that in that profession, and then in your menopause years, you are the chairman, you are the director. Are you going to throw everything away because of menopause? No. It says we are daughters of Abraham, if or daughters of Sarah, Sarah and Abraham. If we do not give way to fear, I love the me message version of it. Message version of this same passage. It says, Sarah, for instance, taking care of Abraham, amen, taking care, and you need to understand if you if you are married at this age, you need to take care of your husband, amen. <laughs> that is your firstborn baby before you had all the other babies you had. Your children are just the <laughs> they're your second batch <laughs> of babies. Your first baby, your first child, your first son is your husband. See what the Bible says here in the message version of First Peter, uh, um, uh, chapter three. Amen. From from verse five now, for taking care of Abraham, Sarah took care of Abraham and would address him as my dear husband. She did not allow her mood swings to 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 make her. Bat his head off before he speaks. You know, some men are even scared to come home because they know that <laughs> they're going to meet a lioness at home because she's going to yell at him and demand, Why haven't you done this? Why haven't you done that? Why haven't you done that? No, 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 that is not it. You know, we still have the fruit of the spirit, as I said earlier long suffering, patience, gentleness, kindness. Those things must still be in your life even though you are having your great through menopause we are talking about these things amen we have to talk we have to talk that's why we're having girl talk we have to talk so your feelings may not you know you may feel um grouchy you may feel like yelling you know i'm not going to use the b word <laughs> you will you might feel like you know not being pleasant but when you put the word of god forth I was just, so this is what sarah did in her menopause she decided to take care of her husband she 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 worked on her the uh, the her system of communication her system of communication was what she called him lord she called him my dear 
my loving husband, my dear husband. She used the correct language. She didn't say, oh, I'm going to menopause. So I speak anyhow. You know, somebody was saying something about how she, she actually ruined a lot of her, 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 her relationships with her husband, with friends around her because she, 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 uh, she was out of control. Child of God, you should not be out of control by the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm not saying you can do it in your power. I tell you, there are many times I've busted into tears. Just having a simple discussion with my husband, I've busted into tears. I'm, like, I'm even wondering, why am I crying? You know, well, get over it. You cry, clean your face and carry on. That is life. Amen. So, take note of what Mama Sarah did. Remember, we are her daughters. And then he goes on to say in the Message Bible, you will be true daughters of Sarah if you do the same. Do the same thing. Unanxious and unintimidated. Unanxious. I come against the spirit of anxiety. Can you say that? I come against the spirit of anxiety. I am unanxious and I am unintimidated. Since Sarah was not intimidated, amen, Sarah was not intimidated. When she's, yes, Hagar was able to give birth to uh, 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 before her. And when she saw the son of Hagar oppressing her son, she went to Abraham boldly. She was intimidated and said, cast out this bond woman. But the son of the bond woman cannot have an inheritance with my son. She was bold about it. And Abraham was upset about it. But God woke Abraham up in the middle of the night and said, everything your wife has said you should do, go and do it. Amen. God began to speak on behalf of Sarah because Sarah knew the heart of God. And when she spoke, so when, when, when she spoke, she spoke by the Spirit of God. Even though her husband did not accept it initially, but God was able to speak on her behalf to her husband. Amen. God will speak on your behalf to your husband when you are spirit-led, when you are spirit-controlled, when you allow yourself to be spirit-filled, filled by the Spirit of God, by the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Verse 7 says, Husbands, in the same way, be considerate as you live with your wives and treat them with respect as the weaker partner and as heirs with you of the gracious gift of life so that nothing will hinder your prayers. I know some men are listening to me. That is the reason why I'm even going to this verse. It says, Husbands should be considerate. Dwell with them with knowledge. Dwell with them with knowledge. Your wife seems a bit grumpy or whatever. Just Give her a little bit of space. Be considerate. Amen. Don't walk out on her and say, now it's time for me to commit adultery. Because whether you like it or not, if you're going to have sex with a woman that is not your wife, you are going to hell. You are planning for a destiny without Christ. There is no excuse to go and sleep around. Husband, bear that in mind. Bear that in mind. There is no excuse for adultery. There is no excuse for it. Even though we do employ women, make sure you look after your husband. Make sure your husband is sexually satisfied. Make sure, you know, that message is always passed to women. But please understand. Even men and women, to be honest, the world, the world we are living in today, we hear things that are ridiculous. Some women will even say, you know, I don't even enjoy being with my husband. And they go and commit and they go and have affairs and things like that. Those things will take you to hell. If you are involved in that, ask the Lord to have mercy on you. I, God is so faithful. If God, it, <coughs> Paul, Apostle Paul said, I am chief of all sinners. Most of the people listening to me right now, I'm sure you have not taken a knife to kill anybody. I don't think you have taken a sword to cut off anybody's head. Most people. And if you have, Paul said, I'm chief of sinners. God forgive Paul. So if God could forgive Paul, God can forgive you. But please make sure you start afresh with God. You don't go back into that horrible lifestyle. Amen. So marriage is still sweet. Marriage is honorable. Even in menopause, you can still have a wonderful... In fact, it should get better, like old wine. Because now you know each other. You know, you know each other better. You know how to support each other better. Praise the Lord. So don't allow menopause to negate the word of God. The Bible says, what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, wise woman, that's who you are. Whether you're a menopause, whether you're a young lady, you're a wise woman. And the Bible says, you're a builder. The wise woman builds her home. Amen. Still referring to um, um, Sarah, Romans chapter 4, verse 19 says, And be not weak in faith, that's Abraham, he considered not his own body now dead, 
So men too have their own. Men are not as viral and as um, on fire as they were when they were in their 20s and 30s. So they too have their own uh, um, midlife crises. They have prostate issues, erectile dysfunction issues, so many issues that they also go through as well. So I believe your marriage will even be sweeter because both of you are going through one thing or the other and it's just a matter of you understanding, giving each other the necessary support. So Abraham's body was dead when he was 100 years, years old. Neither yet, he considered not neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. So menopause, her womb was dead. So that's kind of like um, an explanation of what uh, women go to the reason for all those menopausal uh, sy symptoms because obviously you are not menstruating anymore you are not ovulating and because you are not ovulating you are not menstruating um pre before you get into menopause you know the time of the month that you are very active sexually really is when you do that ovulation period and you're not experiencing that anymore so that of course is going to affect uh, 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 your sexual desire and things like that. But then, Bible says he didn't consider the deadness of Sarah's womb. And we were not told that Sarah conceived by immaculate conception. So, uh, she still had, in fact, when she laughed in, I think, Genesis 18, she said, shall I have pleasure at this age? Shall I have? But who would have said that I, Sarah, this barren woman, would give Abraham a child, who would have said? And that would be your story. Who would have said? Whatever you are going through, amen. That is the message of what the Bible says about menopause. Whatever you are going through, God will make a way. There is nothing you go through. There is no tribulation you go through. It is common to man. Such is common to man. But God is faithful. He will make a way of escape. I said he will make a way of escape. Verse 20 says, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Amen. And I believe that was the same for Sarah. Um, Hebrews 11 says, by faith, Sarah conceived. So you cannot give up your faith. In fact, I, I believe you're, you will be stronger. Because the Bible says, when I'm weak, then I'm strong. So if I'm, if I'm weak because of menopause, I am strong because I have faith in the word of God. That should be your attitude. Amen. Do not stagger at the promise of God, but be strong in faith. Feed your faith. Amen. Don't shut down this broadcast. Listen to what God is saying to you. Listen. Let God speak to you and reassure you that there is a way out. Amen. There is a way out. A man of God was, was sharing how God told him. He said, God said to this man of God, he said, I will not take you far as long as you keep on following me with your emotions. As long as you keep following me based on how you feel, you cannot go far with me. That struck my heart. And I believe God was speaking to me as well. If you are being, oh, you, are, you only believe that God is with you when you are happy, then you can't go far with God. Because God is not moved by how you feel. The word of God is not based on how you feel. Amen. Abraham did not stagger at the promise of God. Abraham is the father of faith. We need to follow his example of faith. He did not, he was not moved by how he felt. He staggered not at the promise, at the word of God, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. So, you have a victorious life, whether you are in menopause or not. If you are strong in faith, strong, develop your faith. Listen to the word of God. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing the word of God. Feed your faith. Say, I can do all things to Christ that strengthens me. You, you, you lady who spent your life working at that career, now it's time for promotion. Don't allow the devil to rob you of that promotion that God has for you. Go for it. Don't allow menopause to stop you in Jesus' name. Another woman, very quickly, that we can see was in her menopause is a woman called Naomi. Ruth chapter 1 um, describes, brings her again on the scene. At the beginning of uh, Ruth chapter 1, we can see Naomi was with her husband. She had two lovely children. They moved from Bethlehem, Judah. They moved to the land of Moab because there was bread there. And she lost everything. She lost her husband, lost her two children. And we can say she was in menopause because in verse 11, it says, Ruth chapter 1 verse 11, Naomi said, Turn again, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Are there yet any more sons in my womb? That they may be your husbands. Are they yet any more sons in my womb? So what was she saying? I don't have a well, my womb is not functioning. I'm not menstruating. 
So because of that, I cannot conceive. Now, in case you are listening here, you are wondering what has menstruation got to do with having children? Well, if you it's naturally in the natural, because I've had testimonies of women who did not have any menstruation and they had babies. God did it. I I believe in a supernatural God that can give you babies even without menstruation. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I know if you're not a believer, you will not understand. <laughs> Amen. But those of us that believe that believe in miracles, that believe in signs and wonders, we know that there is nothing our God cannot do. So naturally, for a woman to be able to conceive, she should be somebody that experiences um, uh, her monthly period. Right, so if you don't have a monthly period, really, you will not be able to bring forth any children. So that is what I'm talking about Naomi now. That is what Naomi was saying. I am in menopause, so I cannot, I can't give you any children. <laughs> I can't give you any children. And then, of course, oh, I can't produce any children. Sorry. And of course, um, because of how she felt, her age, she felt she lost everything. I can't get a job. I'm in my fifties. I can't get, I've been I've, I've been in a position where I had to apply for jobs in my 50s and it wasn't funny. It was not easy. It was oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. You know, you apply and then you know <laughs> well <laughs> if a child of faith you believe God and God will move on your case, but you know that first they want to take all those young girls in their 20s before they even look at you in your future. But you know what? God showed up amen as long as you don't give up god is on your case god will make a way for you go raise somebody that will say mm, you know what we the, instead of these young girls we need that lady in her 50s we need that that lady that girl that lady at menopausal age that's the one that we need hallelujah go and god will favor you and god will open the door for you god will give you that promotion there are times that companies just they, they, they want to promote the younger ones because they know they have the they, they have the strength and everything but sometimes you know when they put younger people into positions putting them above those who are older they can those younger people don't have the experience they don't have the stamina they don't have the um, um and they can't endure when there's a little problem they don't oh, remember they fall sick that they, they, they quit they can't stand it but that woman that has been there that has gone through and knows how to how to that has, has, has developed that strength of character is able to deal more with that situation so if you are in the position of looking for work or looking for promotion in your in, the, in your menopausal age i'm telling you and i'm i am a living testimony that god will make a way for you so because Naomi was in her grumpy stage she said in verse 20 don't call me Naomi which means sweetness or pleasant Call me Mara. Call me Mara. Now, as a man think it in his heart, so is he. If you tell people to call you bitter, what are you? You are bitter. Why did he, why did he say that? I said, for the Almighty has caused me great grief and bitterness. The Almighty. Can God cause his own beautiful daughter grief? Can God cause you grief? Can God cause you bitterness? No, that is not God. It is the devil that causes bitterness. It is the devil that causes a uh, 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 pain. That pain is uh, remember in Job chapter one, was it was it was it God that caused pain in the life of Job? That was not God. God allowed it to prove to the devil. He said, I'll be considered by son of Job. There is none upright like him. God allowed it, but God was with Job. And if you read Job 42, you will see that God gave back to Job everything that he lost. So Going back to Naomi, Naomi felt bitter. Naomi, even the word bitter. What is bitterness? When something is bitter, it has a harsh, horrible taste. Nobody eats anything bitter and enjoys the taste of what they are eating. They spit it out. Bitterness is a feeling of pain, a feeling of distress, a feeling of um, uh, resentfulness. And if you keep on nursing bitterness in your heart, if you allow bitterness to stay, it can lead to sickness. It can lead to terrible things in your life, right? So we can see Naomi here in her menopausal age saying, "Don't come, don't come in pleasant, because Naomi means pleasant, me, me sweet. My life is there's no more sweetness for me. I, I've lost my husband. I'm a single mother now. It will never be well with me. No, that is not the will of God. But we thank God because obviously these women that we're looking at, 
when they, 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 they ended up on the right side of God. They, we can see from their stories that God fought for them. That same God is going to fight for you in Jesus' name. Mara, where can we find the word Mara? Exodus 15 verse 23 says, when they came to Mara, they could not drink the water. They could not drink the water there because it was bitter. That is why it was named Mara. That's Exodus 15 verse 23. They could not drink the water. When something is bitter, you can't drink it. You can't drink it. It's 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 terrible. You don't you don't even want you don't want to be in such a place. And again, as the children of Israel, you know, display their character. When they faced bitter water, they began to murmur against Moses. They began to declare, "We're going to stone you. Why did you bring us out of Egypt? In Egypt, we had lovely water to drink. We had garlic. We had onions. We had we 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 had food. We 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 were okay. We had the house to stay. Look at look at this wilderness. We're in the we're in the wilderness, and now the water is bitter. But you know, God did not leave them in bitterness." Job also, Job in Job chapter 6 verse 4, Job said, For the arrows of the Almighty have pierced me. My spirit drinks in their poison. The terrors of God are arrayed, arrayed against me. The terrors of God. That was how, because he went through so much. He lost everything, lost all his children, lost his family, lost all, every single one of his businesses. He lost all of them. And that's why he said, the terrors of God are arrayed against me. But again, the terror did not come from God. It came from the devil. It came from the devil. Whatever, any negativity. In fact, those negative thoughts coming into your mind are from the devil. They are not from God. So Job felt abandoned. Naomi felt abandoned. Even Jesus on the cross felt abandoned. He said, oh Lord, Lord, why have you forsaken me? But you know what is common about these people that I've mentioned? They never gave up. Amen. They never give up. So don't give up. No matter the feelings you are going through, no matter maybe you have gone through things either because of the pandemic or your business is going through something because of living crisis is affecting you, gas prices is affecting you, whatever is affecting you, don't give up. Our God is still God. Amen. Uh, uh, what did uh, uh, David say? He said, do the act be removed. Our God is still God. Even if the earth shakes, even if the sea roars, it goes higher than the house you are living in. Our God is still God. Hallelujah. Exodus 15 verse 25 says, And he cried unto the Lord. That is what you do when you are going through any situation. What are you meant to do? You are meant to cry unto the Lord. Amen. Cry unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, which when he cast it into the waters, the waters were made sweet. So you might be going through something that makes you feel bitter. You might be going through those hot flushes. You might be going through all those mood swings, through the dryness, through through the through the night sweats, through all those terrible things you might be facing. But the Bible says, when he listened to God, God gave him a strategy. God will give you a strategy. Amen. God will give you a strategy. God will give you a strategy of how to cool down your bedroom in such a way that the hot sweats at night that break out at night will not affect you that much. God will give you a strategy on how to get, on how to have how on, on how, how to have a um, sweet sleep. Amen. One of the ways could be even having a bath before you go to bed that can help you to have better sleep if you are having um, uh, uh, symptoms of sleeplessness. Amen. So God will give you a way out. God will speak to you. God will show you what to do. Amen. The waters were made sweet because God gave him direction. So what you really need, amen, when you're going through any menopausal symptom is to ask God for direction. Ask God for direction. I'm telling you, God will give you a way out. Don't forget the wedding where there was no wine. When Jesus, <laughs> when they took that matter to Jesus, and Jesus said, just fill the jar with water and they drew out of the water. The water was sweeter than the original water they had. In fact, it gets better. The rest of your life will be the best of your life. The rest of your days will be the rest of your days with Jesus. Amen. And just, just look at your life as that story of the wine. The initial wine they had was, was basic, was ordinary, even though it was good, it was okay. But when Jesus came, he gave what was extraordinary. Then he said, you have left the sweeter one until now. Yes, the sweeter. So now, come on, say now is my time to enjoy sweetness. Amen. So if you are going through menopause, it's getting better. It's getting better and better and better for you in Jesus' mighty name. Isaiah 26 verse 3 says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace 
whose mind is stayed on thee whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted in thee so do you trust in the lord ha, put your trust in god why so downcast all my soul that's what david said in psalm 42 he spoke to himself split yourself ah, i put myself in god ha, oh girl rise up rise up rise up rise up you can't sit down here and say because of what menopause you are not going to go forward menopause will not keep me down just keep on saying it menopause will not keep me down in jesus name uh the message bible of Isaiah 26 verse 3 says people with their minds set on you you keep completely whole steady on their feet because they keep at it and don't quit because they keep at it and don't quit there is power in the world there is power in the word of god dear sister you can't quit menopause cannot make you quit for whatever it is don't quit don't quit don't quit don't quit whoever puts their mind on god will be kept completely whole at his wholeness means every area of your life will be spiced up every area of your life will be beautified hallelujah because we are people of faith seven corinthians chapter five verse seven says for we walk by faith and not by sight we walk by faith and not by sight amen so we see the first part of naomi's life madam grumpy madam said don't come my, my name is not sweetness anymore my name is now mara but thank god because the rest of the chapter the rest of the book of ruth does not call her mara the rest of the book calls her naomi so she still remained her sweet self she still remained a wonderful self what she went through was a phase and this woman was a woman of influence see how her two young um how her two daughters in love followed her they ran after her. they they stayed with her i know upper turned back but it still would have taken some kind of influence for, for Opa to have left her family and say, I'm going to go with this woman. I'm going to go with this woman. If, if, you know, and then Ruth, of course, never turned back. But I see Naomi as a woman of influence. Can you speak to yourself and say, I'm a woman of influence? Women are influential. You influence your husband. You notice that when you are down, it makes your husband down. If you and your husband are done, then your children are done. Then the whole family is done. But when you are bright and up, the whole family is on fire. The whole family is happy because you are happy. So you are a woman of influence. That is the reason, the reason why you need to work upon yourself. Amen. You might be a worship leader. Can you imagine yourself as a worship leader? You are down. You know, today, church, I don't want to praise God. <laughs> then the whole church is in trouble because you are down. No. I remember one day I was about to give praise and worship. I just somebody um gave me a letter because i used to live in that address they just a letter of song was a letter of song and i and just before the service started I, oh my goodness i was i, I almost felt like saying please i can't and i had to leave praise and worship i just said lord this is your battle amen and that's what it is give the battle to the lord give the battle so that you can influence so that you can do what god has caused you to do so that you can fulfill your purpose menopause can never affect the purpose of god for your life amen no it must not it cannot if you don't allow it hallelujah and ruth was so she, she really clung on to this woman she loved this woman so because ruth saw that this was a woman of god not because she had a title if you have a title praise the lord but it's not about it's about the way you serve your God, the way you know your God, the way the way you you reflect God. I'm sure Ruth must have seen Naomi go through times of lack, times of uh, uh, um, fruitlessness where they don't have anything, but she still saw her call upon the God. That was why she said, "Wherever you go, I will go," because she has seen no food in the house and food will come because Naomi prayed. She had seen sickness come and Naomi will pray and there will be healing. She had seen Naomi call upon the God of Israel and things happen. She said, I must follow you and your God will be my God. How many people will see you at work and say, you know what? The God I'm serving is not the real God. I'm going to serve your God. How many of your neighbors have said, I want to serve your God? How many people around you have said, I want to serve your God? How many How many members of your extended family, your cousins, brothers, sisters, or, or people around you say, I want to serve your God? amen so think about that i need i cannot be a wreck i cannot be an emotional wreck because i need to maintain my influence hallelujah and that was why this woman was able to impact and i believe not only ruth other people around her if you go to ruth chapter 3 verse 1 it says then naomi her uh, then naomi her mother in law said unto her my daughter shall i not seek rest for thee Shall I not seek rest for thee that he may be well with thee? This woman, Naomi, and that was how 
she overcame her bitterness. The story starts with her being bitter. She overcame her bitterness because she was ready to serve. She was concerned about the destiny of Ruth. She wanted it to be well with her. You know, when you take your eyes off yourself, in, in Ruth chapter 1, the focus was on her. Me, I have lost everything. I don't have anything. God has forsaken me. When she forgot about the, 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 the selfish uh, trinity of me, myself, and I, and she started saying, Ruth, you, I need to focus on you. When she started focusing on mentoring, influencing, she was able to overcome her bitterness. When you focus on your purpose in life, that will take you out of bitterness. That will take you out of all, you know, be, being in the dumps being in the dump it will take you out of it so because she focused on 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 on, on, on ruth she was able to come out and of course uh, 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 um, ruth married uh, boaz and ruth had a baby but look at what the women said to her in ruth chapter 4 verse 14 the one said to naomi blessed be the lord which has not left thee this day without a kinsman that his name may be famous in israel he shall be unto thee a restorer of thy life that is the baby she uh, Ruth had with Bidri. This woman had lost everything. There was no physical way she would have any baby. But because she was investing, investing her life, serving the Lord, serving the Lord by investing into the life of a young lady, God was able to reward her. Anybody that serves God, I'm telling you, when you give your life, when you serve God with your strength, my goodness, there, there you will have a great reward. So you'll be the restorer of your life and a nourisher of your old age. A nourisher of your menopause. In those days, the only kind of source of uh, uh, protection or security that you had was your family. You only had your family to rely on. But this woman had lost everything. Anything in the physical she could call, call family was lost. But because this woman was focused on investing, what happened? God gave her a nourisher of her old age. Therefore, thy daughter-in-law, which loveth thee, which is better to thee than seven sons, had born him. Ruth was better to Naomi than seven sons. Naomi lost the only two children she ever had, but God gave her a daughter in love, not just a daughter in law, a daughter in love who was better to her than seven sons. Better to her than seven sons. The message Bible says, the town women said to Naomi, blessed be God. He didn't leave you without a family to carry on your life. May this baby grow up to be famous in Israel. He will make you young again. Amen. While all the symptoms of menopause there, they were. But the baby, she had a baby in her life to make her young again. To make her young again. And they wanted to say, he will take care of you in old age. So what you do for the Lord? What you do in the house of God? Amen. We take care of you in your old age. In the Bible says that they that be planted in the house of our God shall be fruitful in the courts of our God. You shall be flourishing in old age. So that is your confession. You need to confess the word of God. You need to when you start feeling those things, don't just keep on speaking the word of God. I'm not going to saying it's easy. It's not easy, but it's a fight that you you know who the who is the winner. You are the winner. Amen. As you keep on fighting through. Not fighting a losing battle. Not fighting like those who don't have faith. But fighting and, and fighting and coming out on the other side victorious. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 2 from verse 36 tells of another woman who was in her menopause as well. Anna the prophetess. Amen. A daughter again of a, of, of a servant of God. But she was old. She spent all her life serving God. This woman should have been bitter. She was a widow. From, she, only, she was only happily married for seven years. But yet... She, Bible says she never left the temple worshipping day and night. Worshipping when? Day and night. Night and day. She was a worshipper. That was how she was able to overcome. All the, she, did she feel bitter? Yes. Did she feel down? Of course she did. But she refused to focus on what made her feel bitter. She focused on worshipping God. And she carried on as a counselor. She carried on ministry. She carried on. She stayed in the temple. I'm not asking you to pack your bags and go and live in the church. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying, you know, you have a God that can be with you everywhere and anywhere. Don't be far from the Holy Spirit. Hey, don't be far from the Holy Spirit. I, I, I saw a version, you know, where we share the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, you know, we just the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us. You know, there was a version I read that says the and the intimate relationship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. That was the way children of God blessed themselves at the end of the service. 
in those days, they will confess that may the intimate relationship of the Holy Spirit be with you. You know when you are intimate with the Holy Spirit, oh, he, he is a revealer, he's an exposer, he exposes step by step what you need to do. Because this woman was always in the temple, her head was up. Menopause could not bring her down. Hot forces could not bring her down. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you, child of God, nothing will bring you down in Jesus' name. Amen. I've spent so much time going on this, but you know what? God is with you. Amen. God, whatever age you are, whether you are preparing for menopause or whether you're already in it or whether you are in your 80s, I'm telling you the joy of the Lord never fails. Menopause will never stop the joy of the Lord in your life. The joy of the Lord will always give you what? Strength. So child of God, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Let your strength be renewed. Lift up your head. I was we are daughters of Sarah. We must do the same thing that Sarah did. Sarah in her old age brought forth, brought forth a beautiful child, brought forth, you will bring forth, even in your menopause, you will do great things for God, that great, you will do great things, if I, you, I mean, you, 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 whatever it is you want to do, there are testimonies of women who got degrees at the, in their 60s, there are some women who did their PhD in their 60s, they were in their menopause, they did not allow it to stop them from getting to the top, so can you declare, I am unstoppable in Jesus' name? Just declare the game, I am unstoppable in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for being on this um, platform with me. Uh, tomorrow is going to be the uh, um, girl talk show from 2 p.m. Please, we would love to see you there. Come with your questions. We're gonna, we have doctors on the panel. We have counselors on the panel. We have a midwife, health visitor on the panel so that you can ask questions. But you know what? At the end of the day, what is your story you are victorious you are beautiful you are fearfully and wonderfully created and nothing will bring you down in jesus name have a wonderful time let us just pray together father in the name of jesus i lift up especially your daughters experiencing different kinds of symptoms of menopause your daughters who are not in that situation yet your daughters who have gone beyond every woman listening to me Father, we are your daughters. We are your princesses. We are the ones you love. You went to the cross to die for. We are made in your image. Your word tells us that as wise women, we are builders. Father, I receive new energy for everyone under the sound of my voice in the name of Jesus. I receive testimonies in the name of Jesus. I receive help to rise up and take our position. Do a new thing in the life of your daughters in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Thank you for